In this video, we're going to carry out conformational analyses of ethane and propane, two acyclic alkanes with relatively simple conformational energy diagrams. Our ultimate goal here is to model and understand how energy varies as we rotate around the carbon-carbon bonds in these compounds. And so we're going to look at the different possibilities, the different important possibilities, we should say, for the torsional angle and see how energy varies with torsional angle as we rotate around and look for the, the sources of stabilization or destabilization in these molecules as we rotate around. All right, so let's get into it for ethane. Ethane is C2H6. It's got one carbon-carbon bond, and what we're interested in here is rotation around that carbon-carbon bond. So I have a physical model of ethane that we're going to refer to repeatedly throughout this process. We're also going to look at Newman projections, and I'm going to try to show the model as best I can in the Newman projection view, oriented like this with the CC bond perpendicular to the plane of the screen. Now, ethane has two conformations that are really most important to consider. It has an energy maximum and an energy minimum. And these correspond to the zero degree dihedral or eclipsed structure. In that structure, the front and back CH bonds are perfectly aligned, so they're sort of occluding each other in a three-dimensional model that would look like this, with the CH bonds exactly aligned actually at all three CH bonds exactly aligned because the geometry is the same at the front and back carbons. So that corresponds to a zero degree dihedral angle. And then we have the staggered conformation. And in the staggered conformation, we have a 60 degree dihedral angle. And this corresponds to a situation where the front and back CH bonds are perfectly alternating. So I have a CH bond in the front, then the back, then the front, then the back, then the front, then the back. And 60 degrees is the perfect angle, the ideal angle, where, for example, a back CH bond perfectly bisects the angle formed by two front CH bonds. Any movement in one direction or another is going to change the dihedral angle and move the CH bond in the back closer to one of the CH bonds in the front. So the staggered conformation at a 60 degree dihedral angle is the energy minimum. Actually, it's as far apart as we can get those CH bonds. And speaking of which, the staggered conformation as an energy minimum is naturally lower in energy than the eclipsed conformation. And the eclipsed conformation, in fact, is, is terribly unstable. Because in the eclipsed situation, now we're in a situation where any rotation, any torsion around the bond is going to move the CH bonds farther apart and alleviate steric interactions that exist in the zero degree perfectly eclipsing conformation. So this is actually an energy maximum. We can think about it as a transition state in the process of rotation from one staggered conformation to another. We hit that energy maximum at the zero degree dihedral angle. This slide shows how the energy of the ethane molecule varies as we rotate around that central carbon-carbon bond, going from a dihedral angle, for instance, of 180 degrees, or we could call this negative 180 degrees, if you like, to negative 120, negative 60, 0, 60, 120, and 180, covering that full 360-degree range of possibilities for the dihedral angle. And what we're following here is the dihedral angle between these two CH bonds to the hydrogens labeled in red. So at the center of the diagram, we have an eclipsed structure with a zero degree dihedral for those particular CHs. But at 120 degrees, we have eclipsed structures where the red CH bonds are eclipsing other CH bonds um, with, with black hydrogens. But in any event, let's kind of start on the left and follow what's going on here from left to right across the diagram. So what you should visualize as we move left to right is rotation about the carbon-carbon bond, specifically a torsion that moves the bonds of the front carbon with respect to the back. And the way this particular diagram, these particular Newman projections are set up, only the groups at the front carbon are moving. Notice that in all of these conformers, and the eclipsed conformers get a little funky because we've got to jog things a little bit, but we've got this Y shape at the back carbon that is maintained throughout the diagram. So the only things that are actually moving are the groups at the uh, front carbon. The back carbons are left stationary. So for example, here we start with this eclipsed, uh, this staggered structure, rather, with the two CHs, anti to, uh, the two red CHs, rather, anti to each other. 
And to get to the next structure, we're going to rotate until we go from that 60 degree dihedral to a zero degree dihedral, dihedral or from staggered to eclipsing, if you like. Another way to think about this with respect to the red groups is we've gone from 180 degrees down to 120 degrees in this rotation, and we're just going to continue doing that. So we go from an eclipsed structure to another staggered structure here via a little bit more rotation. We're going to continue rotation around to get from this staggered structure up to this eclipsed structure. And we're going to continue rotating to get to another staggered structure here. One more 60 degree rotation to get to this eclipse structure. And finally, to get back where we started, we're going to do one more 60 degree rotation to get back to this structure. And notice this structure is identical to where we started. So makes sense. This should be periodic, right? We've gotten all the way back where we started after a 360 degree rotation. Notice also that all of the staggered conformers are equivalent to each other. They're all at the same energy. And that's because they all have CH bonds at a 60 degree dihedral. There's nothing special about the red CH bonds in particular. This is just a way to follow the dihedral angle, really, at the end of the day. Same thing with all the eclipse structures. These are all equal in energy to each other because they're all just three CH bonds eclipsing. And notice that our staggered conformers with that 60 degree dihedral are the energy minima. The eclipsed conformers with the zero degree dihedral with bonds perfectly aligned are the energy maxima. The transition states, again, if you, and this makes it very clear, transition states in going from one staggered conformer to another. Now the energy barrier here, the difference in energy between the staggered and eclipsed conformers is about 12 kilojoules per mole, and this corresponds to 2.87 kilocalories per mole, which is a unit that's more commonly used in organic chemistry. So the question now becomes, why is this? Why is the eclipsed conformer higher in energy than the staggered conformer? We alluded to this a little bit, but we're really going to dig into it on the next slide. Any structural factor that leads to destabilization of a particular conformer and that can be alleviated by some kind of conformational change is known as a strain. And when the conformational change that can alleviate the strain is a torsion, the strain is called a torsional strain. The destabilization of the eclipsed conformer of ethane is a classic example of torsional strain. And it's the origin of the energy difference between the staggered and eclipsed conformations. In ethane, torsional strain is due to some combination of steric repulsion in the eclipsed conformer, which destabilizes the eclipsed conformer, right? You can imagine when these bonds are perfectly aligned, the CH groups are relatively close to each other. There's going to potentially be some steric repulsion there. There's also a stabilizing effect that exists in the staggered conformer, which exaggerates this energy difference even more, having to do with the fact that there are CH bonds that are anti to one another. I'm not going to say too much about this, but in essence, it's a sigma bonding to sigma star anti-bonding interaction between CH bonds that are aligned anti to each other that actually introduces some stabilizing electron delocalization. But for our purposes, you can think about it as really the steric repulsion effect is all you really need to worry about. Now, one thing we can infer from this 12 kilojoule per mole difference between the staggered and eclipsed conformers is that each eclipsing interaction is worth about 4 kilojoules or 0.96 kilocalories or basically 1 kilocalorie is a nice way to actually think about a kilocalorie as a unit. It's the energy difference due to one destabilizing CH eclipsing interaction. We're going to use this number soon as we get into more complex conformational analyses where CH eclipsing interactions are going to show up adjacent to and along with um, other types of eclipsing interactions involving bigger groups and larger energies, most typically. But in any event, we know that First of all, the 12 kilojoules comes from the torsional strain associated with the eclipsed conformer. That eclipsed conformer has three CH eclipsing interactions, each of which is worth about 0.96 kilocalories. That makes a total of 2.87 kilocalories, or 12 kilojoules per mole. And of course, here in kilojoules, this would be 4 kilojoules for one of the eclipsing interactions, 4 kilojoules for the second and four kilojoules for the third eclipsing interaction due to um, the CHs being eclipsing. And this is going to give a total, of course, of 
12 kilojoules for the strain energy built into the eclipse conformer of ethane. And this 4 kilojoules is a transferable number. Where we see CH eclipsing interactions in other structures, we can take, we can hypothesize, right, that that is going to incur an energetic penalty of about 4 kilojoules, even in structures that are much bigger and more complicated than ethane. Now, propane is in a similar situation in that all of its eclipsed and staggered conformers are equivalent to each other. The only difference between ethane and propane is that in these eclipsed conformers for propane, where we have an extra carbon, there's a CH3H eclipsing interaction, where we had just an HH eclipsing interaction in ethane. And there's one and only one of those in the eclipsed conformer of propane. So what I've highlighted in blue here are CHCH eclipsing interactions, like we saw for ethane. And if we again think about and measure the energy difference between the staggered conformer of propane and the eclipsed conformer, now it's 14 kilojoules per mole. This is somewhat larger than the 12 kilojoules per mole that we saw for ethane. So why is it larger for propane? Well, the CH3 group is larger than a hydrogen, right? So it stands to reason that the eclipsing interaction here is going to be more a, lar a greater strain, right? There's going to be more electron-electron repulsion between the larger CH3 group and H than a smaller H and H. And so the CH3H eclipsing interaction is worse, more destabilizing than an HH eclipsing interaction. And we can actually do some math to measure this, arguing that, okay, each of these eclipsing interactions is worth 4 kilojoules apiece. That's 8 kilojoules of the 14 accounted for. This leaves the HCH3 eclipsing interaction worth, quote unquote, about 6 kilojoules. And this corresponds to about 1.43, or, or if you want it roughly, about 1.5 kilocalories, with the overall energy difference here being about 3.35 or 3.4 kilocalories per mole. So propane, similar situation, where we have one staggered and one eclipsed conformer. All of the staggered and all the eclipsed conformers are equivalent. It's just the energy barrier is a little bit higher, thanks to the introduction of this new eclipsing interaction between CH3 and H. As we move forward, we're going to move to butane, where we replace one of the H's on the back carbon now, one of these three H's in the back with a CH3. And now we've got a really interesting situation where the staggered and eclipsed conformers become different. We're going to recognize three distinct staggered conformations and three distinct eclipsed conformations in that molecule.